Hey everybody, it's Josie. Welcome back to Cedar Creek Homestead. I hope y'all have had a wonderful day. I've just been working around here making some preparations. We're under uh, the uh, gun. I started to say under the weather, but I don't want you all to think I'm sick. We're the, under the gun for some more icy weather Wednesday and Thursday. And um, that we dodged it last time. We did get snow and sleet, but no ice. This time, they're a little bit more confident that we may actually get some um, pretty good amounts of ice. But thankfully, it doesn't stay like a, a major cold snap where it's going to stay f below freezing for days on end. It's going to uh, Thursday and Friday or Wednesday and Thursday, this, the um, uh, icy conditions. And then it warms up a little bit. Um, and so we should be able to thaw back out, I hope. I'm hoping, hoping, hoping that we don't get ice, but I'm making preparation. And so y'all know that I shared with you the um, two weeks ago that we were um, supposed to be getting it. And I showed you my preparations and I still have those things. My kerosene lantern is still sitting on my, on my dining room table and I still have my other preps. We still have our generator, all those things, so we're good to go. I hope you guys have, have um, I, because I think Texas and, and Oklahoma, where I'm at, Arcan part of Arkansas, Missouri, and maybe another state are all um, kind of under it for that for the weather. And then I don't know as it moves, if temperature-wise, if it's going to uh, follow on out and be icy in other areas or not i'm not really sure about that but i know that i've made preparation and i hope you guys have too now a sweet sweet little lady sent me some of those you remember i was saying i needed those things to slip over my over my chore boots because that was the one thing that i hadn't given any thought to because on, i'll be honest with you how he always took care um, of the chores when it was icy like that he did the outside chores and um, and he allowed me to do the things here in the house and so I hadn't even given it any thought to um, having something for for my feet for icy weather snow was no problem but icy I hadn't made any preparation and really until last year when we had that big um, snow and I uh, snow event that affected Texas and Oklahoma before that, we'd had quite a few years where Oklahoma really had a pretty mild winter. So we kind of just, I guess, fell out of practice on it. But anyway, this sweet little lady sent me the yak tracks, I think is what they're called, that slip right over my, uh, over the bottom of my um, chore boots, and I'll be able to walk out through there and, and get my animals taken care of. And I'll be, just be honest with you guys, the old gray mare ain't what she used to be. I used to love to um, laugh and play and cut up with my brothers and my sister when it was snowed and uh, go out and have snowball fights and go sledding down the hill. We'd take uh, whatever we could find, really, pieces of plastic or whatever, and go slide down in the hills and hollers. And, and we had so much fun. We didn't even care that we had to climb back up the, the hillside and slide down again. And we just didn't think anything of it. But I'm too old for that now. And I don't even enjoy making a snowball. Um, I just as soon sit and, and drink a cup of hot coffee and watch the snow. It's beautiful. But falling down hurts too bad anymore. And I don't recover like I used to. So thank you to my sweet little friend. You know who you are uh, for sending that to me. That was so kind of you. Well, guys, I know that you've heard um, the news today uh, of the Russia invading the ukraine and all of the things it's just a big old mess really and i watched as those people begin to make preparation of what their life was probably going to be like or what they feared their life was going to be like and i watched as uh, families were going out to their rusty old bomb shelters that they hadn't had to use in years and years and getting them opened up and getting them aired out no doubt uh, laying in supplies water and and food and first aid, clothing. It's winter time over there, uh, cold, and so they've, uh, you know, probably making preparations to have blankets and and things because they don't know 
when or if they'll have to go into those bomb shelters, but they're making preparation for it. They don't know if they're going to, in the middle of the night, have to get up, get their little children up, and get out there and, uh, and take cover and be protected. What a sad thing that is, really. The president came out today with sanctions against Russia. Some of the other countries have done the same thing. And I really don't know... Um, I'm not an expert, so I don't really know how this is going to affect him. I don't know if they've went so far into it now uh, with egos being what they are and all of the things with uh, uh, the politics over there, if he would be able to pull out and um, save face or if it's just he's went far enough now that... Um, He's going to see it through. I, I really don't know. But they are, the Ukrainian people are living through something that I hope that we don't ever have to live through. But I do know that even though it's far away on the other side of the world, that things are going to come down the pike that are going to affect us. Um, you can almost guarantee that the price of fuel that's already going sky high is going to continue to get higher and um you know so so just make make uh, preparations for that you know if you're able to you might consider storing a little bit of fuel now you don't have to go out and try to buy some big tank and fill it um, but you know uh, depending on where you live and what you do for a job oh, I'm on a farm and so we have to have diesel and regular fuel for for things and so that's something that I have to take into consideration the tractors don't run without diesel <coughs> and they're a big, a big part of how our farm operates so I thought we might talk a little bit about tonight about what we should do you know, it can be really scary when you hear about countries going to war and or being invaded like what they're being invaded. And you, now the Ukraine right now are saying that they don't want to be offensive. They don't want to go on the offense and they don't want to uh, be the aggressor, but they do want to be able to defend themselves if they need to. They wanted to try these sanctions. They wanted to try all these different things, uh, you know, going against the the oil industry and going against the banking and going against all the other things that kind of hits Russia where it hurts to see if that works. Um, but they want to be able to defend, defend themselves if need be. And I listened to their foreign minister and he said, we're united. We love our country and we want to, you know, we want to stay intact. And I thought, how does that really affect us here in this nation? And what can we do? Well, one of the things that we can do is continue to look well to the ways of our household. Continue to make preparation. Now's not the time to stick your head in the sand and say, I don't want to hear it no more. It's getting scary. And I just, you know, there's no jumping off spot. You need to continue to make your preparations. Continue to go to the store. There's not any shame in going and buying cans of vegetables that you didn't personally grow and can yourself. In fact, I have home canned vegetables and I have store bought because that's just increasing what I'm able to store for my family, ensure that I'm able to feed them, and also to give to others if they're in need or give to a um, food pantry you know they'll the food pantries will take the store-bought cans um, and I understand that because you know not everybody home cans things the same way and um, I get I know that there's liabilities and all kinds of things and so it makes sense to have those canned things also when someone comes by and you can bless them and fill up a grocery sack for them well uh, I always remember my, my granny and Miss Chisholm, they were always willing to help. But you didn't see their home can stuff going into the sack very often. You usually saw the canned goods, go, can, the grocery store canned goods going in there. And it's because they wanted those jars for their canning. They knew they needed their canning supplies. Keep on with your preparations for your gardens. 
like I said, you need to make sure that you've getting your seeds ordered. There's some that are already getting sold out, so continue to order your seeds. I would look at if you're wanting to do your fruit trees and your berry bushes. I'd go ahead and get those um, ordered and plant and uh, planted when it's good for your area. I would think about your um, if you're going to make a poultry order, those kind of things. I would do those things and get. Uh, get your go ahead and get your preps here so that you can ensure that you've got them and you can um, do the best that you can do to look well to the ways of your household. Now, hopefully, here we're looking at uh, um, ordering some uh, meat birds. Uh, I've got chickens. Uh, I've got my chickens and of course they lay eggs and all of that but I need some meat birds that can grow out for a certain amount of time and then be processed and put in the freezer and they're good to go for the year for us and for um, uh, for the for other family members there's all kinds of things that you can do and don't let fear paralyze you into not doing anything um, yes there's probably going to be some things that that um, these foreign entities will try to do to America. Not necessarily coming here on our soil and fighting us, but they're probably going to uh, try to hold oil against us, and they're probably going to do some cyber attacks and that kind of stuff. And it can all be fearful if you don't have a plan. Make a plan for your family. I've been telling you all along, get your little binder out, make a list. I'm a big list maker. Make a list of all the supplies that your family's going to need and buy those supplies. Don't buy stuff out of fear if your family's not going to eat it. I would have to be very, very hungry to open a can of green peas and eat them. So if your family doesn't eat green peas, don't stock green peas peas don't let fear rule you at the grocery store don't go out and spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars make a list of what you know that your family will eat i've got a family member that is will not eat pasta to save his life but uh we so we're thinking of other other ways to make sure that we've got plenty for him Another thing that I want to tell you is we're getting ready to change seasons. Remember, we're getting ready uh, next month. March will be spring. And if you've been to the stores at all, you see that they're starting to switch up into their spring items. Uh, Walmart, Target, all the places that y'all go shopping at, they're switching seasons. So now's the time to begin to put things that they're putting on clearance, which will be their winter items, Think about what you might have need of next year. Now, um, I, we were just there the other day, and um, the video that I did that had uh, little Howie in his little snowsuit, they had some of those snowsuits on clearance, and they had several different sizes and several different colors. And if they would have had a bigger size that would fit him next year, I would have probably got that and put it back. Uh, because he would need it you can go I know I had to go get an, a load of feed and I went to tractor supply and they have um, boggin hats you guys call them boggin hats you know what I'm talking about those fit on your head <laughs> anyway I I went to tractor supply and they had boggin hats and gloves on clearance wool socks those kind of things so all of those items could be purchased and put back i got some gloves um and we i had already gotten some wool socks but anytime that you see clearance items re try to try to keep in mind what your family has put uh, make you a, a little card if you have to get you an index card and write down family members on there and their sizes and stick it in your wallet of or your pocketbook of your purse and when you're out shopping and you see something that's on clearance and you know that that particular family member wears that or if you have little children like little Howie that's going to be up in another size then you know that you can get those things and add to your preps stretch your budget but you're prepped for what might be coming 
it's I have a feeling guys and I love to be an encouraging person but I have a feeling that it's going to get a little bit rough and a little bit bumpy and the best thing for us to do is try to make some preparation ahead of time that's the best time is ahead of time because if you're trying to do it in the middle of a crisis you're trying to do too many things at once and you're trying to get what little bit of finance that you might have to purchase those things you're trying to get it to stretch too far to for too many things and it's just not going to work so if you can get some things ahead of time also keep your eyes peeled for other items another thing you can do to look well to the ways of your household to make preparation for times getting kind of bumpy is to pay attention to those around you that are selling things or giving things away that you might be able to take and to repurpose now uh, uh, I was able from a family member able to get some blankets she didn't want them and now I have a lot of blankets but um, I happen to be one of those persons that can never have too many blankets because I'm thinking I can use them for all kinds of purposes and um, so I brought them home and, and uh, they're they're good to go and I can give them to other persons that are in need uh, Blade and Cheyenne took two of my blankets out on the boat with them and only one blanket came back so I'm thinking that they must have lost one of those blankets and they just didn't want to tell me so so, so things can happen all of the time you can lose things uh, but keep an eye out people um, all the time are going through their things and and uh, wanting to gift uh, gift it to, to someone else and you can get some really good things that will work at your place if you can repurpose it in your mind think of another way to use it uh, for your benefit one of the things that we can do is to be informed now I don't mean sit and watch TV the news or listen to it on the radio or whatever means you do until you've got yourself so worked up and so uh, so stressed that you're unable to cope but keep informed of the things that are going on so that you can make wise decisions about what you and your family need to do there's a wealth of information out there and you need to be able to sift through it and decide what affects your family and what doesn't with that I will also say that there are reports that um, that have went out uh, with misinformation with false information not the stuff that they they put you in Facebook jail and all that kind of stuff for that's not what I'm talking about I'm talking about these uh, cyber things that are going on now where they're taking somebody and they're able to <clears throat> um, put a voice with them that actually sounds like that they're saying something and put it out there on a video so that they can say that this person said this the example that I saw was actually um, uh, Putin and he that whoever done this video had done it in such a way that they had him speaking to the American people and um, it was like in a threatening and derogatory way and it was a fake video make sure you know where you're getting your news make sure that you aren't just taking things at face value that you're proving things that you're making uh, making sure that what you are hearing and you're repeating is true and I would caution this also to be willing to work together as a nation. You know, there's an undercurrent moving in this country, working overtime, it seems, to divide us, getting us arguing about all kinds of things, politics, race, uh, men against women, this group against that group. And it's because they know that there's power when they divide we need to stand up and say enough is enough 
we are united in our efforts as Americans. We are going to make it through. Now, the most important thing that we can do in a situation like this, when we hear of wars, we hear rumors of wars, and we see all of the things that's going on, number one, the thing that we need to do to prepare most of all is to prepare ourselves. We can prepare our family. We can prepare our food and our water, our first aid, all of those things. But we most importantly, firstly, we must make sure that we know who Jesus is. Now, all of those preparations are important. Food and water, first aid, being informed, knowing that we've got the right news, the correct news, being united with our fellow countrymen, and not only our countrymen, but our community, our family, our friends, our church family. It is so important to have church family and to know that you've got others that are like-minded and they're praying, you're praying, that you're seeking the Lord. That is an important part of all of this. The Lord said, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, even the more so when you see that day approaching. Now, that's Josie paraphrasing. But anyway, be, you know, uh, get in there with your church family and pray one for another. Pray for your community and your family. Make sure that your heart's right with the Lord and lean on Him, depend on Him. He will lead you and He will guide you. But I guarantee you, He's going to require you to do a little bit of work. We're going to make it through, guys. We're going to encourage and lift one another up. And remember those poor people in the Ukraine. I cannot imagine being a mother in the middle of the night, being fearful that I was going to have to grab my babies up and run to a bomb shelter because I didn't know whether the enemy was going to make it to, my, to where I lived. Because they're not really sure, folks, right now, where they're going to stop or or what. Fear of the unknown is a real thing. And we can't allow ourselves to absolutely fall apart with this. Let's just remain calm. Do what we know to do. Try to get out of debt. Keep stocking. Keep looking well to the ways of our household. And until next time, guys, I love you. I really do. And the Lord loves you. We're gone.